everyone, welcome to another exciting Minecraft tutorial. I am Tyken, and today I'm going to show you how to make my secret fire lava place. So first things first is as you can see from the both left and right side, it looks like a fairly inconspicuous lava place, at least from the front. The walls will hide a lot of that stuff later. Uh, and then this is the open version where you can easily just walk downstairs and get to your secret chests or your secret room and base, whatever you prefer to hide. But uh, not only is this great for hiding a secret pathway, but it's also a lot cooler than the traditional fireplace. You don't have that annoying crackling, and you're being warmed by the power of lava. So it has all of the cool things going for it. And then easily, at the click of a button, you, everything just goes right back to like it was never there. How you want to decorate it is up to you, but I'll teach you how to make all the mechanical parts. Over here, I have a nice little staging area where all the most important circuits are. And then I'm going to build everything on camera for you in case you actually want to see how to do this. So first things first, I put these pistons here to kind of show you how this circuit works. Uh, you press the button or activate the mechanism in general, and everything turns on in a certain order from uh, right to left. And then it turns off in the op opposite order, so left to right. You can see easily right here. And this is a T-flip-flop. It basically turns any kind of signal, like a button, into a lever. And that is very important because it allows you to have multiple uh, buttons that all do the same thing, essentially. And then when you press it again, it just turns everything off. So it's really neat and better than levers in almost every way. So uh, in the description below, I have a save file so you can actually look at all of this and how it works. Uh, I also notated all of the important stuff here because this circuit is very important and if you mess it up it probably won't work. Uh, but thankfully everything is notated so you can easily download this save file, look at how everything works and see how you messed up if you did. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is build over here. Uh, I realized I kind of messed that up right there. Twice actually. There we go. That's what it should look like. So this is essentially the pattern that everything is going to be built in. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is take a block of your choice, preferably solid and non-flammable, or this might not work, uh, and then in all the white spots you essentially make this little pattern. And then uh, you're going to want to figure out where you're facing this, because this can be faced in any direction, but the bottom right corner is always going to be your starting block, unless you reverse the order and everything, but then it just gets complicated and weird. So from your starting block, you're going to put some repeaters in a U shape. Or I suppose in this case an N because it goes this way and loops around. So kind of like an N or a U depending on which way you're facing. And then instead of continuing the pattern, you're just going to make all of the other ones facing forward. So essentially from the start, left, up, right, and then fill it in the other ones facing up. From here, you're going to want to put one tick on this one, two ticks on this one, and then one on all of the other horizontal ones. And then we'll go ahead and put some pistons here just to make sure you got the basics down. Perfect, we don't need these anymore. Now we're going to want to make the T flip flop. This is probably the best one I've ever seen. Uh, there might be better ones and more compact ones, but this is my favorite design. So you're going to need a comparator, just facing right here. You can actually go a little bit further back if you'd like and just connect it with redstone and put a repeater in front of it. But we're just going to put it right up against it just for simplistic sake. So comparator, oops, comparator. Uh, you're going to have a hopper facing towards you. You're going to have a hopper facing up and then we're going to loop it back. So it should look like this. I have all the little directions. So down with the hopper, uh, right up left. And then you just put the hopper right there. Then you place a button right there, and again, you can uh, run a redstone wire to it instead if you'd prefer. And then you can just throw something in. In this case, I'll throw a button. And then you can see here, actually we'll put these pistons back just so you can actually see it working again. So provided it works, perfect. And then it shouldn't turn off until you press the button again, which you can do there too. There you go, easy peasy. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do the part that actually makes the fireplace do it in the correct order. So from here, the from facing forward, it's leftmost, but from actually facing the side that you need, it's the rightmost. 
So you're going to put redstone dust just coming from the length, and then redstone torches on the other ones. Now, again, you can do this as far away as you like, but I'm just going to shorten this as short as possible just to make this simpler and less complicated. Uh, you're going to put a redstone repeater right there. You'll put a solid block of your choice and redstone dust right there. And from there, you're going to put pistons and they are going to be pushed out. And then, uh, you want to do these first so it's a little bit easier to determine where to put the other ones. And then you're going to put sticky piston there, sticky piston there. And then from there, sticky piston, sticky piston. Just directly down. So easy. So then, the cool thing about pistons is they are not a solid block. So you can put redstone and it connects through them. And not only that, it actually turns it on considering that it's facing it. So it's kind of a win-win in every situation. So then we're going to dig a few blocks right about here. Going to loop around. And then these are technically essential blocks, so we'll just highlight them with... Uh, our indicator block. We're going to put a repeater here and redstone here. And essentially what this does is it carries the signal all the way through, uh, hits the block, powers the redstone, which powers that block, and powers the piston. And again, you can make these longer if it doesn't turn on for whatever reason. Just add another repeater like right before it comes here, and it should connect no problem. Now we only have the bottom pistons left, and that's pretty easy. It's going to get a little complicated because we have to do a trench. So how this is going to work is we're going to put redstone here, and then we're going to put another redstone here. Now it's going to connect to the upper one, and that's a bit of a problem, but you can easily circumvent that by putting the uh, uh, solid block on top of it. And then if it does that, you can just replace that, and the piston will update. Now what you're going to want to do is kind of the same trick here. You're going to put a block right there, redstone dust right here, and a block right here. And then we're going to use a repeater to push that signal through and hit both of them. So when you're done, when it's off, it should look something like this. So all those are off, these are up, these are extended, these are off. And now we're going to take our building material of choice. You can use whatever you want, as provided it's not flammable. Now, if I recall correctly, the ones that are pushed up first are the slabs. And essentially what you're going to do, if you're, if you're making some kind of border around your fireplace, which I recommend uh, specifically because it's going to be filled with lava, uh, you should probably surround it in something like this. That way it's very inconspicuous as well. Uh, what I like to do is get a little fancy too and replace like uh, the front like right here. Oops. You know what? We'll go ahead and put these here too. So these are the stairs and you're just going to connect them right there. And then what I do is I put stairs right there which is going to be the front of our fireplace, which I will do kind of a little mock-up just so you can see where everything's going. Easy peasy. So you can kind of see that's what it's supposed to look like. And right here are the blocks that the piston pulls down. So, provided we did everything correctly, I'm not infallible, so we take another button, and then we're going to line our redstone here. Uh, fun tip, you can also do this uh, inside of your secret base. That way, you can close your fireplace behind you, and nobody just sees a big secret entrance just sitting there. You connect a button to it, you press it, it activates the flip-flop, which usually doesn't work the first time for some reason. So you do it again, and there you go. Now from the front, everything's opened up, and you just walk down. Boop, boop. Uh, oh yeah, you would also put more staircases right here, obviously, and continue down as far as you need to, otherwise you're just going to fall. Uh, and it's perfect because the redstone goes directly under the staircase, so it's a win-win. Uh, another cool little trick you can do, by the way, is you can use a lever right next to your button. Uh, granted, you'd have to do this a little differently however you have it set up down below, but essentially if you turn it, turn your fireplace off with the lever, no matter who presses the button or activates the thing, there's no way for them to open it, even if they know it's there. So once you're in your secret base, nobody can get to you without breaking a bunch of stuff. So if you're in a multiplayer world and everything's protected from block breaking, then you are solid, nobody can get to you. As proven here, like press the button again, press the button again. The only way to circumvent it is to put another redstone signal right through here, which would technically circumvent it by doing like that, just because you're overriding the flip-flop. But, you know, there's ways around that. Uh, but again, if nobody can get to your stuff, there's no way they can get in. So lever essentially locks it. And then if you want to open it up again, you just turn off the lever, 
and then press the button again. And there you go. You just exit out of your base. Boop, boop. Now, the hard part is... Well, I mean, honestly, the redstone was the hardest part. Uh, the hard part is deciding how you want to do the redstone. Because the biggest problem here is that if you want to put it in an actual house, it might get a little wonky in that um, it depends on how much you want to hide it. But if you're doing this like deep underground or in a mountain and space isn't an issue, you can easily hide this. Uh, for this case, um, what I did here is I have redstone torches kind of making a redstone ladder up to the top where I have my dispensers hidden up here. And I essentially just have my redstone signal attached to turn off the torches on both sides. You can kind of see them connecting right there. And when you do this, well, we'll just press the button over here to make that a little easier. This turns everything off, it scoops it, and the lava just slowly deactivates. Of course, it didn't open up the fireplace, but that's because I didn't bother going through all that. Oh, it should have. That's weird. Maybe it's the same dispenser bug. Yeah, it's the same dispenser bug. I don't know what's up with that. Well, dropper bug. Again, like from when I do a redstone torch over here, it's, it's so strange. Anyway, uh, so this one, this is when you don't really have any real constrictions. Um, and you can do it from any angle. This you, you can do it as easily as possible. This is in no way complicated because you can just make a little staircase with a redstone going up to your repeaters and it's no problem. But again, if you're trying to be sneaky about it and like have a wall, like just say you have a cobblestone wall because uh, you don't want anything too flammable next to it. There used to be a wood wall here and it burned it away. But like you can see, you can easily hide all of the mechanisms right inside of the same block as the wall. So absolutely no problem. Uh, the problem is with some of these slimmer designs is you can kind of tell something's there. Like you can see the dispensers there. And you can put blocks back there. Uh, it's just not ideal because you, you can kind of see the back wall, which eh, not really preferable. I like being able to see full view of the lava. Uh, and like this design over here too, you can actually, oh no, this one's a little bit higher up, which requires a little bit more, um, it requires some kind of, uh, mantle to go around the top. No big deal, especially if you plan on covering this up. So you can just do something like so. And this is the slimmest design. It looks good and it works well. You don't, you don't see anything going on here. Uh, so this is the best slim design that I could come up with. Uh, but it's a little bit more annoying because of the redstone torch ladder. So whatever whatever you prefer. This is just my preferred option. Uh, again, the redstone just goes up to the side, across the top. This one just has redstone torches going up and then hits the little redstone right next to each one of those. So absolutely fairly easy to do. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that from over here. Uh, what I like to do is come out about here. You're going to need your dispensers, not droppers. One here, one here. You're going to need some lava. And again, you can kind of put these wherever. It, it just depends on how much space you're working with. Oops, forgot to grab another one. There you go. And then from here, you just kind of fill in the walls. Doesn't matter too much. But we're just going to do that for the sake of it. You definitely need to fill in these walls a little bit. And it doesn't matter. It shouldn't affect the redstone too much. So kind of like that. And then the last, well, besides connecting the redstone, so we'll do that real quick. Oops, keep messing that up. So you just redstone all the way up here. And if it's too far away, you can do a redstone repeater. Uh, you're going to want to do it in a way that doesn't really affect your T flip-flop. And there's a ways around that, but we'll worry about that another time. Uh, and then it should be close enough that you can easily press the button and it'll do that. But before we show it off, we need signs. Uh, any sign of your choice. There's also other blocks that would work. Pretty much anything that lava can't go through, which is a lot of stuff, or break away. So like fence gates would work, just whatever you prefer. I think signs just look a little bit nicer. With your lava place open, you're going to want to put one directly above the stairs right there. And then one up away from that. And then if you don't want to have a back wall like right there for whatever reason, one more set. 
Uh, the signs there are important just so you can walk down. Those are just more aesthetical options. Um, so essentially the lava should be able to go into the space directly below it, flow down one, go over one, and then flow down, and then stop right there. So that should be good. And again, th these upper signs work fine if you put a block instead. And then we should just put uh, another button or lever. There we go. And it pushes these slabs back up, the lava comes down, and you're hidden. And again, you could do the same thing with the lever. Absolutely no problem to lock yourself back in here. Of course, you're gonna wanna make sure to turn it off with the lock, like so. And then the buttons don't work. As long as, as, long as this is getting a redstone signal, it should work. So, no problem. Uh, and then, let's see, to get away, to get around the uh, range limit, you basically have to have your T flip flop somewhere in between both buttons. Um, it can get a little tricky, but essentially you don't want them to overlap. Should be no problem. I, I don't think I need to cover that in this video. That should be everything, and I can go over more later. I hope you all enjoyed this. Again, the save file is in the description below if you need it. Uh, ask any questions you might need in the comments. I'm fairly good at replying. And then I hope to see you guys soon.